Okay, and that's it. Whew. Now I have to do some explaining, just a little bit, so you know what's next. Okay, so we ended up with 16 funds, right? Because that's, we had 16 gaps, and that's because, of course, my head size and also where I cut it off on the actual big palm itself. Because, of course, some are wide at the, at the base of the palm uh, leaf, and they get narrower at the tip of the palm. And that then makes the amount of funds we're going to have in any given hat different. So don't go over 20, but don't go under maybe, I would nowadays think 14. So between 14 and 20 is a great number. Now, in order to work out how to uh, do this weave, this next bit, it's going to look very complicated, but actually it's very, very simple. When I have 16, the rule is like this, and I already mentioned this in very great detail in the second video with diagrams and all this kind of stuff, so if you're not sure when I'm explaining it now, check out that video and then it'll become very clear. But to suffice to say here, without having to go back into all this detail again, if I have 16, I'm going to take away 3, okay, I'm going to put 3 of these funds to the side, so 16 minus uh, 3 minus 16 is 13. Now, what I would next do is always split that number in half. So, 13 is of course uh, 6.5, but that won't work for us because it's not an even number. So, I'm going to go for the higher part. So, I'm going to have 7 and 6 and 3. And that's how I divide, that's how I find out how wide, how many funds I'm going to have to skip over. We're going to take one of these guys, in fact we're going to take each one of these guys and we're going to, going to go skip over, rather on the outside of these funds, you'll see now in a minute, but between this one, so on top of these ones, but behind these ones, we're going to go skipping over a certain amount and then weave it back in. And to determine that number, we just in our little bit of maths, whereby we're going to skip we're going to skip over 6. Why 6? Well, it's very simple. We have 3, we have 6 here, we have 7. The 7th one, which is going to be our starting point, is going to be skipping over the next 6. And that's basically the rule to making this hat. If you have 18, the calculation is the same, you have 3, and then you split that in half, 15 in half, again you have an uneven number. If you had an even number, it would be just the same. You would just take, like, if it was, let's say, for argument's sake, 15, you take away 3, you have 12, 6, and 6, so you would just take one of the 6 and go over 5. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If it didn't explain it well enough, that's why I'm going to stop this explanation. Uh, check out the second video. Now, we're going to start our weave, and the weave repeats itself again and again. In fact, it's the same weave we're going to be using as we did in the second video of the simple hat. Um, except we have these bits here which are kind of in the way but they'll make the bowl actually much more solid and this is actually going to be great for the actual sombrero itself because I think if you made if you wanted to make the sombrero you need to strengthen the bowl of course um, because all that it's going to be the structure that's going to hold the sombrero in shape I don't think you can actually do it with the normal uh, smaller hat and so if you, are, if you have stuck in your fonts and they're all pointing in that direction, we need to make sure that our first one is going to be on top of the second one. And how do we determine that? Well, if, this, if they're all pointing in that direction, we take the one furthest to the left. That's going to be our first one. So then the second one will be going under there, the third one under there. Fourth, making sure we're going in through that gap as well. Fourth, fifth, six, and seven like that, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first one and I'm going to jump over, so on the outside of six, okay? Then I'm going to pretend that these are not there and I have to go in behind this. So I don't want to go in behind it and have this one in the way. I have to actually ignore this one and just come out of here like that. 
Okay, so yeah, let's just put that in there. So now I am over six behind one. Just put it a bit closer. Over this one. Over this one. And then okay, see I'm over this one. And then I'm gonna come out of here. Because I'm gonna put it behind here, I'm gonna go take it out of there. And there you have it. So what have I done? I've gone over six, in behind this one, over this one, and in behind the next one. So which one is next? Well, we've just done this one. So the next one we need to do is literally the one that's underneath it, so the second one. But now because we've used this one up, which is our seventh one, the first one, we need to add another seventh one to the whole thing. So we're going to lift the next one up and just place it under this pile, like that. And then we have our uh, jumping over six again. So I'm jumping, this is my six ones now, the one that I just lifted up. And this time I'm going to go in behind this one, which means just going in like that. So I'm pretending that these uprights aren't there. That's basically all there is to it. See, I'm now going in behind that one, over this one. It's kind of hard to do it while I'm showing you as well. Over this one. See, this the one that came before is coming out of here. Over this one and out, out of there. Okay. And that's it. And now all I got to do is repeat that weave again and again and again until I get to my very first one here. And once I get to that one, I simply lift that one up as my sixth one. And then I get to this one, I lift that one up as my sixth one. And so on until I'm fully finished and I'm coming out of here. So, you know, by that time, trust me, you will be very good at this weave. Now one last thing, I'm on my last uh, one, keep track of which one you did before, this one was the one I did before, because otherwise it's like very hard to know, well, does it need to go in there or what? Well, there was one easy way to find out is to look back here, wiggle it, and then you know um, that this one actually came before, so that one is actually the one you want to follow on top of. So it went in there, so this one needs to go um simply just in there and then we're good Now is the point where we really want to start incorporating these and the way to do it is simply taking one of them and just sticking it under the one that's just beneath it. And it's the ones that are actually, that you can tighten. Okay, so you just go like that. Just be careful that you don't break these spines. That's really important. So let's just stick them in there quickly. Okay. I'm just going around. Now one last thing that I want to mention about these uprights as well is it's a great way to t tighten these guys as well. So if you're finding yourself, you know, that these are a bit loose, what you can do is you can actually, and you should do this, is to literally try to get these as tight as possible while you still can. So you can tighten these from the both sides and this makes this design really, really handy. Okay. It's probably better to go this way around, and then this will lock that on top. Now we just tuck these under like that, and that's just also quite nice. 
Oops. See, I'm rushing now. I'm rushing for the whole thing. It's okay. Um, I have to rush a little bit because, um, yeah, I want to just get this done now because it is literally getting darker now. Okay, so the length I want, now that I'm after tightening pretty much that bottom rim nicely, um, I want it to be maybe just at the line of the hole. I want to cut that off. So I'm bending it in, marking it, and then I'm going to cut it just there, like that. Now I can cut it at an angle, make the pattern a little bit nicer, but I'm just going to go for straight in this one. I just have these. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so what are we gonna do with these now? Um, we want them to be incorporated in the hat so that this is going to be even more solid. And how do we do it? Well, it's very simple now. We lift this up and we look at... Let me just take this out of the way so you can see what, what we're doing. We see this one that's lying below and the, no, the most logical place where we're going to put it in is sliding it under there. Now if I bend that too much, it's going to break. So what I can actually do is I can just pull at it a little bit here. Now that they're all in the right position, pull at it a little bit. So it's just lined up with where my finger is. Okay, so we're going over this one. So we're coming out of here. We're going over that one and in there like that. We really don't want to break those because it looks it looks awful and the strength of the hat is then uh, I don't know a little bit compromised if we break them. Just pull at that. You know I just came up with this by accident, which is the beauty of this. <laughs> this whole thing is just an accident. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again with the next one, and the next one, and so on. Now, and that's all the pieces, extra pieces in there. And there you got it. That is our hat, looking okay-ish. I mean, I didn't spend as much time uh, as I could have, and I'm rushing a lot, because I really want to make that rim now. Um, try and see if we can make a sombrero. So I'm gonna have to just tuck these in, cut them up real fast, and then just, we'll work on the next piece. I have my 16 funds here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, if I lift this up I can show you here as you can see a weave coming out here so you have one here and then another one here if I am to tuck I'm going to keep with the same kind of thing with the spine being outside if I am to tuck this one under there and then under there all the way into that end there so it's going right into the original, right into that original actual spine that's coming off that middle round major uh, main spine. You can't really see it here, but it's there. Yeah, you can't see it. It's going. It's coming out here and going around like that. I'm going to continue on that very same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I ended up with 17 funds for some reason. I might have miscounted as well. But I think I had 16, so I don't know. And there we go. Now we have to try and figure a way, figure out a way of weaving this. So we literally have to do the same thing. Under two, over, under, over. Ha ha, I see where there's gonna be a difficulty. Um, Basically, these are way wider spaced apart. This is my first time doing this now, remember that. So actually I would need twice as many, right? Stuck in there to make this work. So what we're gonna do is we're going to stick it in here like that. And then we're gonna try and see if we can follow this line under that and try and get it in that corner. It's going to be a slightly heavier hat than I had planned, but it's going to be a cool hat if I can pull it off. Okay, so let's attempt the actual weave itself. And basically what we're going to do is 
We're going to go under two, like we did before, like that. And then we're going to go under two, over, um, under, over, and under, and over, and under. Or is that too many? Let's just see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is, I think eight is a good number. The reason being is we don't want it too wide and we don't want it too narrow either. And I think eight is going to bring us out to about here, maybe there, and that's going to be wide enough to cover my shoulders. And of course I could have probably gone wider and especially if these weren't as thin as they were, this base would be out, out to here anyway. Um, so you just got to play around. That's what I have to say. And if you wanted to go really wide, you'd have to add another one in between, but then the hat might really get too heavy. And there you have it. <laughs> First ever coconut leaf hat. And because we're in Kerala and this beautiful country, state uh, of India, I'm going to call it the Kerala coconut leaf sombrero. I may or may not yet make a curvature the next time I'm making one I probably have a more of a curvature on it and maybe just a little bit longer but it is actually covering my shoulders very nicely I'm very happy with it it's it's one that you could use in the field all day long especially it's a little bit on the heavy side for my head at the moment but when that dries up it'll lose half its weight so that's that's the important thing and it's going to be durable and strong i'd say you could probably have a coconut fall on my head and it'd, it'd be great shock absorber um yeah so that's it hope you enjoyed the video uh tell all your friends anybody watching from kerala i hope i really hope you don't mind me calling this the kerala sombrero i mean it in a good way um yeah so that's basically it um hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching